Hey, welcome back to my classic books um, review series. <laughs> um, this week, um, I'm the covering of, of Mice and Men. So compared to my last review of the, the Brothers Karamazov, um, I have comparatively a lot less like interesting things to say in this video, but I think it's good practice anyways. Like Once again, I'll reiterate, I'm not really good at speaking without a script like, um, like this video, but I'll try it anyways. Okay. So a little background. Um, personally, I'm new, new to the author John Steinbeck. Um, he published this this novella in 1937. Um, I'm a relatively new Steinbeck reader. Um, I've read some of his other earlier works, The Pastures of Heaven, Tortilla Flat, and To God a, To a God Unknown. By the way, To a God Unknown is incredibly bizarre, incredibly bizarre story. Um, yeah, anyways. So Of Mice and Men is uh, another one of John Steinbeck's earlier works. Um, like I said, it was published in the 30s. Um, an interesting fact. Um, apparently his dog ate the original manuscript, and he had to start over. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, the title of Mice and Men, it was named after a poem line. Um, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. It's... Very pre uh, very true, very true indeed. And if I had to guess, I would probably, I would probably conjecture that this is probably his most widely read work today. Um, I think it's, at least in America, it seems to be widely read in um, high schools, and probably due to its incredibly short length. Um, I would guess. Anyways. I mean, I haven't read um, his other major works, East of Eden, The Grapes of Wrath. I very much hope to. Um, I just have a collection of his five earlier, five earliest um, tales by Library of America. Shout out to them, by the way. Um, probably the best um, quality uh, volumes on the market for American works. Um, very, very good stuff. Anyways, so let's talk about some of the contents of the... Uh, of the of the novella um so broadly speaking it's like i said short it's nice it's tight um about six chapters long it's about the it's kind of about loneliness and the futility of dreams and plans um and in that sense it's it's kind of a bummer um yeah pretty much yeah it's those recurrent themes i said loneliness and yeah the futility of uh, plans. Um, the two main characters are George, George Milton, uh, and Lenny Small. They're sort of laborers who go from place to place, um, mostly having to leave because Lenny, who suffers from um, some sort of uh, intellectual disability, um, kind of inevitably winds up getting the two into trouble and they have to leave. Uh, and start over, so to speak. And so that's how the how the novella begins is them um, embarking on a, a new a new venture. Um, yeah, I don't really want to spoil this work in case you haven't read it. But I'm not going to lie; there's probably like a a one in three chance that I accidentally slip in some details here. But um, I'll try to keep it broad here. Plot-wise, uh, and relating to the themes I was discussing. Um, yeah. So the character of George, um, who's, who's sort of like Lenny's caretaker and friend, um, I mean, he says pretty clearly on that, um, that the, the kind of life that they lead, um, this laboring life is a pretty lonely one. And George knows that without Lenny, he's kind of nothing. He would be all alone. Um, he would no longer have any need to like pretend to be working towards something. He could give in to his base desires and have no need to better himself for the some for the sake of someone else. Um, it's just kind of sad. 
And so he he tells Lenny uh, they construct this 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 magnificent this magnificent plan where they'll they'll gather enough capital and they'll start their own they'll buy their own land and uh, live off of it together. They'll have everything they have ever needed and wanted. Lenny will have rabbits to take care of, and yeah, and that's what they're working toward. Um, later on, when they go to the ranch, they meet all these um, these other laborers, and among them is this uh, the stable hand. Um, he's black, and he's uh, marginalized due to his race and kind of kept isolated from the other from the other workers on the ranch. Um, he kind of goes. He tells Lenny, um, in about halfway through, he goes on this kind of tragic, um, tragic uh, reminiscence or like reflection about his life and his position. <laughs> and of course, Lenny's not like really listening at all. But it's it's just sad about how lonely he is and how you kind of go crazy. Um, with no one to talk to. He's a pretty... If we're going to relate things back to the, the Brothers Karamazov, I would say he's almost kind of a Smerdyakov character. In that, he was born into... Uh, uh, just by virtue of being born in, with like immutable characteristics that he had no control over. His options in society are incredibly constrained. And there's a little bit of, well, there's resentment um, for that. Uh, Crooks, the stable hand, he's, I mean, <laughs> he's kind of given up on thinking things can, like, ever get better. It's just sad. And then there's Curly's wife. Um, I guess I didn't explain. Curly um, is sort of the antagonist um, to George and Lenny. He's kind of a aggressive, uh, angry fellow who likes to start fights. Anyways, and his wife um, doesn't like him and is constantly uh, talking to the workers. And... She, she claims that she's um, acting out doing, due to having uh, nobody to speak to. Um, and she, going back to the, uh, the theme of dreams, um, she sort of, sort of laments um, the glamorous life that she thinks she almost had in, in movies that was sort of taken away from her that she would do anything to have back because now she's all alone on this on this ranch it's incredibly boring for her and the only person she has to talk to is her husband uh, curly which she finds wholly uninteresting and it seems that she only really married him out of a spur of the moment thing and doesn't really love him i mean so <laughs> nobody at the ranch is is happy Existence is bleak. There is no hope. Every day is the same. It's monotonous. Um, the workers, they can't overcome their nature. They waste their money as soon as they get it. Even though they know they could save it, they could be better. Um, to that end, um, the uh, sudden entrance of George and Lenny um, as new laborers is almost a sudden flash of light in the darkness. However, it only really burns briefly because like the other workers, Lenny can't control his nature either. Um, he doesn't know his own strength. He gets scared easily. And... Don't want to spoil it, but I mean, just like that, the dream of a better life dies. It gets snuffed out 
by the harsh realities of the world. I don't know. Tragedy. Tragedy was inevitable, I suppose. Anyways. <laughs> um, so a final, a final judgment here. Should you read this work? Yes, yes. Um, as always, I find that Steinbeck is, and I, he, he's incredibly talented at painting, um, painting the scenes. He's, he's really great at describing um, nature. It's incredibly, it's incredibly captivating stuff. Um, very idyllic, very idyllic. The way he describes um, all, pretty much all of the stories take place in California. Um, the mountains, the streams, the light, the animals. He's great. Quite literal artistry. Um, any reasons why you shouldn't read this? Not, not really. Um, there's some really old and odd terminology, and yes, there's some slurs, I guess, if that... Um, yeah, so I wouldn't repeat some of these, <laughs> some of these strange, some of these strange words out loud. I guess, but then again, probably no one would know what you're saying. Um, but yeah, I guess you can be wary of that if that's something that bothers you. I guess. Um, the only really critical note, um, I would say is that there's this weird in the final chapter, chapter six. There's this sort of weird moment, um, where like Lenny's conscience is, um like manifesting in the form of his aunt and a rabbit. I just find that, found that incredibly strange and kind of out of character. Um, it doesn't really make sense within the confines of this character. Um, I kind of think it was just strange overall too. I kind of wonder if it was included to sort of fluff out that final chapter to be honest. Anyways, I'm sorry. But I mean, overall, it does what it does well. It's an effective, sad, sad, sad tale. So you should read it. I was thinking about this, though. I don't know if this is... I mean, it's gonna. It's incredibly cynical. And it's going to sound like I'm hating. But I liked it. But I guess I have this compulsion to... Uh, immediately scrutinize anything that it, I guess <laughs> makes me feel um anyways so I was kind of thinking I don't know I have no evidence this is just rank rank special rank speculation here I'm not sure if <sighs> part of me wonders if Steinbeck is <sighs> trying to pull one over on the reader um I guess okay what I'm basically wondering here if like evoking sadness evoking or like eliciting that emotion is like one of the easiest things to do and it certainly leaves an impression when you do do it so i kind of wonder if it's cynical of the author or i guess me to notice it or wonder about it if they create works just for the purposes of like creating a gut punch it was like oh <laughs> i'm gonna make him cry with this one i'm gonna make it i mean it can be like it's really easy to create a sad story be like once there was a puppy um he was really cute everyone loved him and he loved everybody and then he got hit by a car it's i think it's really easy to create a sad story And I feel like if you can make people feel something, people like it and remember it and talk about it. And I kind of wonder sometimes. I don't know. I guess you would say maybe like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like tragedy porn or something. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I feel like I feel like tragedy, I think there's two emotions uh, that if you can do them well and consistently and not be repetitive about it, I think um, 
sort of, I don't know what the word is, cement the, uh, the story or the piece of art in somebody's mind. I, I think that would be um, like tragedy slash sadness and comedy. And of the two, I think comedy is more popular in the time it's written. I think comedy ages infinitely like worse than tragedy does. But I think it's popular in its own time. What I mean by this is that um, like no one's no one's busting a gut at like the Roman Roman uh, comedy writers when they read their plays. Um because it's largely context dependent. Anyways, I mean, this is all rambling. I wonder if I'm just going to ramble for every single one of these videos about something tangentially related to the topic. Okay. Anyways, so, so yes, read this work. Read this work. Um. Yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you have a good one. If you have any comments... Or you want to um, like uh, posit your own interpretation or opinions on the work or anything I've said, <laughs> take objection to it. Um, please, please do. And um, if you feel so inclined, um, it'd be cool. It'd be very, very epic if you could like and subscribe this video. All right. Once again, thank you. All right. Bye-bye.